Yeah. 
me, not against me. I am who you say I am, Lord. I am who you say I am. <laughs> Stretch out. Woo! Sometimes you just gotta stretch out. Woo! Yes. Hallelujah. Tell me about it. Hallelujah. Ooh, said, hallelujah. And it doesn't seem like I can work free. The man said, Don't you know God specialized? Anybody ever been there? Hallelujah. Was that not the truth? <laughs> Where is it? Glory to God. And so let's look at Luke chapter 8, verse 22. And we're going to see if we can find it. We might have to listen to that song two times. Glory, hallelujah. Luke 8, 22. Luke chapter 8. We are going to begin at verse number 22. We're going to look at a few scriptures. It's going to get us there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This just hit me uh, yesterday. I talked about it a little bit last night. I thought we'd expound on it today. The Bible says, Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. Pay attention to the words. I preached this many times. But he showed me something different. 
And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and water, and they obey him. He asked an interesting question. Where is your faith? When I read that, it reminded me of the question that God asked Adam. Adam, where art thou? Locate yourself. Do you know where you are? Where you are, not where other people are. Not where things are. Do you know where you are? Where are you in God? Well, Messiah asked an interesting question. Where is your faith? Examine your faith. Where is it? Where is your faith life? Where is your faith walk? Where are you in your faith? Where is your trust level? If you are going to, for example, look at a gallon of of water is it at the top is it in the middle is it at the bottom where is your faith how would you measure your faith glory to god and so as i read this again all of us probably have read this over and over and over and we looked at the fact that he spoke to the wind and the sea, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about that. But the thing that stood out to me because of our theme this year, our theme that we should trust the Lord, God knew that there were going to be things happening in our lives to make us trust. He knew that no matter where you started out with your faith level, and some of us started at two, some of us started at five, some of us began this year at seven, some of us maybe at nine or ten. But now after going through what we have gone through just now in the month of uh, April coming to an end, just in these last few months, where is your faith? Did it change? Has it gone up any? Have you been exercising your trust in the Lord. Do you trust him more now than you did two months ago? Did anything happen to make you say, oh, now I really trust the Lord? Remember the woman when her child had died? She had already said to her husband, I perceive that this is a man of God that's coming to visit us. Let's make him a little room. She already knew he was a man of God. They already concluded that. That's why they made that the, went through the trouble of making an addition in the home. That was a lot of money. That was a lot of trouble. So they knew he was a man of God. But once the child was born, they knew he was a man of God. But when the child died and came back, she said something that's amazing. She said, now I know. And in my Bible, when I read that for the first time years ago, I wrote a little note. Didn't she know before? What did she know before that made her think, now I know? Even Abraham at one time, he said, now I know. And it makes you think, well, what did he know 25 years ago when he left his home and his family? It's because as you know him, you know him. The Bible says that you know you follow on to know. And so your faith gets more and more and higher and higher and greater and greater. And then the battle gets bigger, but that's okay because you have faith for that now. And so when the Lord told us at the beginning, glory to God of this calendar year, and he said, I want you to trust him, he knew that these battles were coming. And he knew our faith level would go higher and higher. You know why? Because next year we're going to need this level of faith for next year. And the year after, somebody was telling me they have a big thing going on now. And I believe they're saying we have to let our light shine. 
And so this morning on, uh, on one of our phone calls, we talked about that a little bit. Now there are people are saying, oh, we've got to shine the light because it's so dark. Oh, we've got to let our light shine. And I said to the team, I said, remember, that was about three or four years ago that the Lord told me that we should let our light shine. You know why? Because he already knew four years ago we had to start practicing letting our light shine because he knew about this darkness. Guess what? We don't have to say let our light shine. We've been shining. Glory to God. And so the Lord has a way of preparing us in advance for the things to come. Where is your faith? Locate your faith because we're going to need it. You think this is a storm. This is not a storm in comparison to what is to come. And so the faith that we're working now is not enough for what is to come. So we have to keep on exercising our faith. Locate your faith level now and make sure that you're building on it, building on it, building on it. Glory to God. Where is your faith? Now this same glory to God story is written in the book of Matthew chapter 8. Let's go look at it. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 23. Matthew chapter 8. Oops, hallelujah. Matthew chapter 8, verse 23. Let's look at it. Hallelujah. He said, and when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye so why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? And he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Same thing happened again, but the men marveled, saying, what manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? In other words, the same thing happened here where the story is told with some, a little few more details. And one of these days, uh, we ought to do a study and look at the differences because there are some amazing differences in the details between what happened in Luke and what you see happen, happening here in Matthew. The thing I want to highlight here in Matthew is the fact that the waves were covering the ship, but he was asleep. We all know that. We've heard this a thousand times. It's interesting because what that tells me, Rebecca, is that he said he, he gave them the order from before. The order was, let's go to the other side. It's a settled deal. Let's build a house. It's a settled deal. Let's go get a job. It's a settled deal. Let's go buy this. It's a settled deal. Let's go to heaven. That's a settled deal. Let's be born again and be new creatures. It's a settled deal. Let's do this. It's done. It's settled. In God's mind, it's over. We don't have to wrestle with it anymore. He said, let's go to the other side. And then after he said that, the Bible says, and he was asleep. You know why? Because his expectation was, after he said, let's go to the other side, now he expects them to do whatever is necessary. We're in the boat. That means just keep on rowing, keep on doing what you do, because we're going to the other side. He's asleep. He's done with it. Because in his mind, we're going to the other side. Never mind the storm, never mind the wind, never mind the wave, never mind any of that. We're done with that. We are going to the other side. Glory to God. I, I hope you're thinking with me. Because he is saying, you do. Now, Tamar, you take control. I have given you everything you need. I've given you the word. Go on to the other side. I'm going to sleep. I'm quiet. Glory to God. Makes us think about what's going on in our lives now. Hallelujah. He told us everything that we need. The Lord shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. He called us, hallelujah, and said we are the light of the world. 
He is not concerned or worried about the darkness that's looming because he already told us who we were. He said, now you go and be witnesses because I've given you power and authority. He is not worried about the power and authority that's looming in the world today because he said, I've already given my people power and authority. Yes. Glory to God. So God is not on the throne shaking and worried about the fact that we might not have the power we need to overcome this life or the authority that's necessary for all these things. Because in God's mind, but I've already given them power and authority. It's like giving your children lunch. I've, I've given you lunch. You've had breakfast. You've had lunch. You've had dinner. Now it's bedtime. What are you crying about? What are we worried about? What are we shaking about? What are we upset about? Where is your faith right here? Everything that was necessary for life, I've already given to you. It's down here where you are. And I've given you the power to acquiesce that, to get that. And so now I can go to sleep. I'm done with that. Glory to God. And so he goes to sleep on a boat. But then now the waves are coming. The water is moving contrary to their expectation because they thought, Seth, that because he said, let's go to the other side, that there would not be a storm. They thought that because he made a declaration that we're going to go from point A to point B, that it was going to be easy peasy. For some reason, they thought that nothing was going to happen in between. What he knew was that nothing was going to happen in the name of Jesus. Look at this power. He thought, I said, let's go to the other side. I can go to sleep now because I have already declared we're going to the other side so I can sleep through this because I already know we're going. So by the time they woke him up and said, we're perishing, it was almost laughable. Like, what do you mean? I'm on the boat with you. I said we're going to the other side. What are you talking about? We're perishing. What do you mean? What Perishing, that was not a part of the equation. I didn't say anything about perishing. All I said was the other side. Perishing is not a part of this. Stopping in the middle is not a part of this. Glory to God. That's why we need the eyes of God. That's why we need that kind of trust and that kind of faith. Because he said to them here, he said, my goodness, why do you have such a little faith? Why is your faith so small right here? You mean to tell me after all the time I've been with you, you don't have faith enough to go across this water? Your faith is little. Where is your faith? Glory to God. Let's look at Mark chapter 4 and look at it again. Whew. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. Hallelujah. The Bible says here in Mark, And the same day when even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Glory to God. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Now I want to stop right there for a second. Because I never thought of this before. Master, carest thou not that we perish? Who were they meaning was going to perish? Carest thou not that we, the disciples, perish and you were going to be okay sleeping at the bottom of the ship? Or did they mean... Master, all of us are about to perish, even you, because you're sleeping. <laughs> Should we laugh right there? 
Because when they said, carest not, thou not that we perish, only Yadida, I'm talking to Yadida, because she's the only one that's laughing with me here. Like, we get it. This is funny. What do you mean? We are about to perish. Carest thou not that we perish? Do you think that I'm in the boat and a devil from hell <laughs> is going to sink the boat that I am in and I am going to perish when I came to be on the cross? Do you think that there is a force on the planet that can take me out before my time? Do you think when I came to shed my blood for mankind that the wind and the rain is going to kill me? What do you mean we perish? I mean, really, look at the scripture. <laughs> Glory to God. We need to look at this because every now and then the saints of God who have forgotten their authority and forgotten who they are in him, we make declarations like this. Because the enemy of our soul makes himself so huge and so fearful that sometimes we're not thinking. What do you mean? We perish. What do you mean? It's impossible for him to die before his time. It's impossible for his blood to be shed before it's time. He came on a mission. He is the Messiah. He is God in flesh. How can what? He drowned in a lake. It's impossible. It couldn't happen. They were not thinking. Where was their faith? Where is your faith? Glory to God. And so the Bible says he arose and look at what he did. Let's take a look at it. He said, the Bible says he rebuked the wind. He spoke first to the wind. He spoke first to the thing that could not be seen. Listen to me, saints of God. There are things that are not seen, but they are doing a lot. He spoke to the unseen thing that was causing the seen things to be out of skelter. He spoke to an unseen element that was leaving some things behind that we could see. He spoke first to the unseen atmosphere because it's the unseen atmosphere that's affecting the things that we see and the things that's affecting us glory to God and so I am saying to us hallelujah the Bible said they said in verse 41 what manner of man is this that even the wind let's stop at the wind obey him and then he left the earth and he said, the authority and the power that I had, I'm giving to you. So when the Bible said, what manner of man is this? Glory to God. Today, we need to take on that manner of man so that we can speak to the unseen thing that is affecting our seen things. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We have that kind of power. We are this manner of men. Yes. Glory to God. And that's God's expectation of us. That we do not continue to allow the unseen thing to do such things in our seen world. Glory to God because we have been given power over the unseen thing. Hallelujah to God. And so he spoke first to the unseen, hallelujah, so that the unseen would behave, so that the unseen would stop, yes. so that the unseen would obey him. Yes. Glory to God, because he knew. What did he know? Thank you, Lord. That once he said, he rebuked the wind. You stop that right now. And said to the sea, Peace, be still. As soon as he spoke to the unseen elements, then he could tell the seen element what to do. Now let's have some peace around here. 
Let's be still right now. Just calm down. Now that the unseen thing has taken its place, the seen things, hey, Shoshanda, can come in alignment with how they're supposed to be. But we have to get the unseen thing to behave first. We have to get the unseen thing under our feet. The Bible said he rebuked it. He didn't speak to it. He didn't get in bed with it. He didn't coax it. He rebuked the wind because he knew that the enemy of our soul and his soul, glory to God, was trying to do what he did not have the authority to do. He was trying to deceive and make them think, glory to God, that he could possibly cause Messiah to perish before his time. How dare you? I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Say we. And so he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, all right now, peace, be still. And once he said, peace, the Bible says, and there was a great calm. There had to be a great calm. He didn't have to call calm. Once he said, peace, be still, the natural order of things was that there would be a calm. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The natural order of things. Yes. And so every now and then, we have to remember, I know I have to remind myself to stop and say to myself, peace, be still, <coughs> so that my peace and my calm will rest in me. Glory to God, because the enemy of my soul wants to take my peace and my calm. Glory to God by the elements on the outside. But we have to speak to that. Absolutely out of the question. Because he already said, we are going to the other side. Oh, thank you, Lord. And so he asked them. He asked them here, hallelujah, in verse 40. He said unto them, why are you so fearful? In other words, we can be full of a lot of things, but let us not be full of faith, of fear. Let's be filled with faith, not fear. Why are you so fearful? Why are you allowing fear to fill your mind? Why are you allowing fear to fill your eyes? Why are you allowing fear to fill your heart? Why are you allowing that? And then he said, how is it that you have here no faith? No faith. There are times when he said they had little faith. Oh, but it's a terrible thing. To have no faith in God. No faith in what he has spoken. No faith, my God, in his ability to carry out what he has promised. How is it that we could possibly be serving him year after year and reading this book and watching what he has done in our lives and come to a place because of what's happening around us that we are more filled with fear than what he has spoken. Mm. Mm. Process that. Mm. Where is your faith? Where is it right now? Glory to God. Because the unseen things of our world are affecting many, many, many seen things. But that should never, ever negate what God has already spoken. We should never, ever allow, glory to God, the faith that people have in evil forces and the fear that they have because of evil forces to stop what we know our God has said to stop the ability of our God. And yes, I said it because people even have faith in fear and faith in things and faith in darkness and faith in evil ones. They trust it more than they trust God. They trust that the enemy 
will exalt more power and ability than God. And they so trust that, that they will actually build their lives based on what others have said and totally negate what God has said. That's why it's important. And that's why I asked David to tape today, because I want to ask the world, where is your faith? Is it in God or is it in some other element? This is something that we should ask ourselves and look at it again. Where is your faith? Because if our faith is built in him, glory to God, then there is nothing when we know who he is. It's a wonder. Messiah said to the people when he said, bring me a penny. Whose image is on this penny? And they said it was Caesar's. And he was very clear, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God. If we believe in the God that we serve, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of this Bible that we're talking about, the God that sent Messiah to die on the cross for our sin, if we believe the God of the gospel, Glory to God of Jesus. If we believe the gospel message, hallelujah, that he has given unto us, and if we really believe that all we need to do is trust, hallelujah, make confession, re re repent of our sins, if we believe that that will make us new creatures in him and that we are now new creatures with new spiritual DNA and blood running through our spiritual selves, if we believe, glory to God, that we can declare and decree a thing and it shall come to pass. If we believe that we can speak to the mountain and the mountain will move because we have spoken. If we believe that he supplies all our needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. If we believe that he is a good shepherd, glory to God, and the good shepherd cares for his sheep. If we believe that he is the way and there is no other way but his, his way, if we believe, glory to God, that he has translated us from darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, yes. if we believe, glory to God, that there is no controversy, that God was manifested in the flesh, if we believe he is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, if we believe from the beginning of the book to the end of the book, if we believe those things, glory to God, then we can stand on that. And we do not have to ask him, don't you care that we perish? Don't you care that we are in the middle of our project and it's not over? And they're going to stop us from doing what we need to do that you told us to do what? It is impossible. It is impossible. Glory to God. And we have to know that. But if we don't believe he said it, if we don't believe, hallelujah, what is written, if we don't believe what the command is, what we have heard, thank you, Lord Jesus. If we don't believe that, that's we get in the middle of the storm and we start shaking. But we're going to elevate our faith today. Hallelujah. We're going to locate our faith on the thermometer and we're going to conclude, I need more faith. My faith is little. It's littler than it's supposed to be. I need more. I have located my faith, and it's not where it's supposed to be. And so the Bible said, and they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this, that even the wind and sea obey him? The wind and the sea obey him. The wind and the sea should obey us. The wind and the sea. The seen and the unseen. The seen and the unseen. The seen and the unseen. So we don't have to worry about global warming. That is not something that we have to stress out about. We don't have to worry, 
glory to God, about the supply train coming through. We don't have to worry. That's not something that's a stress out. The children of the Most High God, listen to what I am saying to you. That the children of the Most High God must remember that the same Messiah that spoke to two fishes and a few loaves can speak to the supply in your pantry. He can speak to your stuff in your pantry. You do your part because don't forget what he said. He, he went down and went to sleep. So his expectation is that we should eat. But if the supply train stops and the food runs out, now it's time to rise up in your faith and speak to your pantry. Glory to God and tell your pantry, okay, now I need some food. And you speak to that rock. If water is coming out, speak to the rock. We need some water. We need it now. Glory to God, because he did not bring me here, hallelujah, to die of thirst. No child of God, because David said, I have not seen his seed begging for bread. No, we're not leaving our camp and go beg the unbeliever for bread. No, we are not doing that. We're going to speak to our pantries, and our pantry will give up the bread in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because the Bible said he spoke to a branch, and the branch bore almonds, and he put it inside the ark so that they can see the God that you serve can cause a branch that is not connected to a tree to be a fruit. Only God can do that in the name of the Lord Jesus. And so if he can do that, that he can give me an orange from an orange tree that's not connected to a tree where is your faith we need it in this day and time and right now is the time to build our faith we can't wait till we're in the middle of the battle to build and so now we get to build our faith we're building it. We're building it. And so these little skimmages, you know, like just a few things are happening in our lives so that we get to exercise and build our faith. Build our faith. This happened. And the Lord is standing there saying, that's my boy. That's my girl. No, no, no. Do it, do it, do it. Build your faith. Build, speak to it. Speak to it. Did you speak to it? Did you talk to it? Did you tell it? Tell it again. Tell it again. Glory to God. And some things you tell 10 times, Tamar, but listen, in a few months, that same thing is going to happen, and I'm going to tell it five times, and it's going to obey. And one of these days, I'm going to tell it one time. Because I've been building my faith. Where is your faith? This is the year to do that. Go to Psalm 77, verse 7. Woo, thank you, Lord. I'm almost done. Thank you, Jesus. We're building, we're building, we're building. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are building glory to God in the highest. Will the Lord cast off forever? Will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Does his promise fail forevermore? Have God forgotten to be gracious? <laughs> Has he in anger shut up his tender mercies? And I said, this is my infirmity but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. In other words, what do you mean? Those are foolish questions. That's my problem. This is my infirmity. <laughs> the Lord hasn't forgotten anything. That's just me having an issue right there. But when I really sit down and think about it, glory to God, what I remember are the things, the great things of God. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember the wonders of old. What do you mean? Hallelujah. I was foolish in what I said, but now that I thought about it, glory to God, I remember my God. Go to Isaiah 40. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27. Oh, there are so many scriptures we could look at. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. What do you mean? Do you think he doesn't see? Do you think he doesn't know? Are you implying that God did not know that that just happened to me and he just said that to me? Are you implying that he missed 
anything? Are you implying that someone hurt me and God did not take that personally, seeing as though I am the apple of his eye? Are you implying the Bible said he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increased his strength because we are trusting in him. Glory to God. Last week I had no might for the battle, but this week I have might for the battle because I am reminding myself of the God, hallelujah, that I serve. Even the youth, the Bible says, shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. You know why? Because they're still yet immature, and they didn't start building glory to God, but they that wait upon the Lord, those who have learned to trust him, those who have learned to believe, those who have been exercising their faith, we are the ones, glory to God, that shall renew our strength. Hallelujah. Strength goes and strength is renewed. Strength goes and strength is renewed. And every time we release strength, it comes back greater. Glory to God. It's the God we serve. Shall renew our strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Glory to God. If you mess with me, I'll fly over my situation. That's right. Glory to God. I don't have to, hallelujah, be subject down to the terra firma of this earth. If you mess with me, I'll go off in the spirit realm and be in a place where nothing can touch me for a while. Hallelujah. I'll find myself and cover myself in the secret place of the most high. Glory to God where the fiery darts. The Bible talks about the shield of faith. If you mess with me and my faith keep on growing, hallelujah, the shield, hallelujah, will be so great that when the fiery darts come, they will not penetrate. Glory to God because I'm mounting up with wings like an eagle. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Those fiery darts, they won't even get through. Thank you, Lord. Run and not be weary. Walk and not faint. What do you mean, perish? We're going to the other side. We have no plan on perishing. What do you mean? Thank you, Jesus. Mm -mm. We are not the ones. Go to chapter 47 right here in Isaiah with me. Oh, bless his holy name. I hope you're excited like I am. I'm excited about his word. Jesus, I'm, I'm holding myself to re together, Rebecca. Well, I feel like an apostolic today, y'all. Glory to God. <laughs> Chapter 47, hallelujah, verse 14. Woo, glory to God. We don't even, uh, you know what, let's not even go there. Let's just jump over to Philippians chapter 4. I know that's good, though. Read it, yeah. Read it later. Let's just jump over so we can be done. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. <laughs> Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. So we end up with these two. Be careful for nothing. Based on our faith. We don't have to worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let our request be made known unto God and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, through our anointed Messiah. Glory to God, through the anointed one that has released the anointing unto us that destroys every yoke. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Master. We have built our faith and continue to build it to the degree, hallelujah, that this kind of peace, that surpasseth understanding. So that glory to God, I spent a moment in the midst of the tribulation and because it, it hurt and I felt the bullet. I felt it when it penetrated. I felt it, but all of a sudden I remember God and I looked and I said, you know what? Let me get this bullet out of here. Glory, hallelujah. I remember the God that I serve. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. We're going to stop right here. I am building our faith in him, our trust in him. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, 
I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's what I went there for. The other part, that's a whole Bible study. But this part, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I will never, I, have, I don't have to pray anymore. Now, when I was a baby, I used to pray, Lord, come and be with me. Lord, be with us. You won't hear me pray that anymore. That's not a part of my prayer. I am already sure he is with me. I am already sure he is where I am. He will never, he promised, leave me or forsake me. I'm not going to believe anything else but that which he's already said. So that we may boldly say, we're going to be bold about it. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. I will boldly say, we, the people of God that have faith in him, will boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Glory to God. The things that I see with my eyes, glory to God, hallelujah, they are subject to the God that I serve. Therefore, I boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I boldly say, the Lord will supply. I boldly say the Lord is in the boat with me. I boldly say these storms and these winds will not overtake me. I boldly say, hallelujah, all the money that I need, I will have. Glory to God, no matter what the banks say, everything I need, I will have in the name of Jesus. If the economy goes completely flat, goes completely down, hallelujah, he has promised me, hallelujah, therefore I will boldly say, I'm going to the other side of this particular situation, hallelujah. I'm going to keep on reminding myself of the God that I serve, hallelujah. I'm going to bring him up from the inside. Even if you don't encourage me outside, glory to God, I'm going to encourage myself because I'm filling up this year. Don't make Mess with me this year. I am filling up this year. I'm filling up now because this is nothing compared to what we're about to go through. And glory to God, I need to fill up my tank now. Hallelujah. So that when things happen, I am going to boldly say, wait a second, I have a God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to boldly open my mouth and encourage somebody else and tell them, wait, I got a God for you. Thank you, Lord. Have you met him? I've got to tell you about my God. He will help us. He is my helper. And if you're in the boat with me, he's going to help. Didn't Paul say? He said, don't worry. The God I serve, whose I am, he's going to take care of every one of us. Because I happen to be in this boat. That's going to be all of our testimony. Everybody in the body of Christ. Because he's telling us this year to trust him. Trust him. So every day, beginning now, locate your faith. Where is it? What's going on? It might not, your stuff is not the same as my stuff. <laughs> or glory to his name. It's not the same as mine. Remember I ate something and I was having an allergic reaction and my tongue got all swollen and I still feel it now. And I was supposed to take the allergy medicine so that it could go back down. I forgot to take the allergy medicine for it to go back down. So I just went to sleep. So while I was sleeping in the bottom of the boat, hallelujah, he just kind of went on and took care of that. That's right. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Now, I wonder, saints, Devorah, I wonder how long he was asleep before they actually woke him up. That's another Bible study. I'll preach that next time. <laughs> oh, bless his holy name. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus. Ooh, thank you, Lord. In the Ramaya Shande Rabakoria Sitte de Boko Shande. Maya Rabako Shande Rabakaria Sitte de Diriander Rabokosha. Lord, we thank you that you are building our faith. You're building our trust in you. 
You are building us up and helping us, glory to God, mm, to do what we need to do now, hallelujah, and for the years to come. Lord God, we thank you that you are fortifying us and you're teaching us how to be harvesters. Hallelujah. You are showing us, glory to God, how to bring the harvest in. You are showing us how to carry what we need to carry and what to do, hallelujah, at this time. You are showing us even how to pass on what you have given unto us. Freely we have received, freely we give unto others. Hallelujah, because you have abundantly supplied us, glory to God. Therefore, we can release it to others. You have shown us how to trust you so we can teach it to others how to trust you. Oh God, you have brought us through many waters so that we can remind ourselves and others, glory to God, and give them our witness. We are witnesses of your goodness. We are witnesses of your healing power. We are witnesses of your mercy and your grace. We are witnesses, hallelujah, that we don't always deserve the goodness that you do hallelujah unto mankind but because you love us thank you Lord God we bless your holy name hallelujah your love is so great it is greater than any force on the planet therefore God we trust you we trust you and we will not be afraid of flesh we trust you and we will not be intimidated hallelujah by the wind that we can't see. We trust you and we realize, oh God, that it's the wind that's making the things that we see move about. Oh, glory to God, but it has no power over us because you're greater than the wind and the sea and you've given us authority over the wind and the sea. Lord God, we give you praise. Lord God, we give you glory. Hallelujah. We are not afraid of bad news. We are not afraid of the time to come. We are not intimidated. Yes. We keep on building our faith in you. Come on, everybody, raise your voice. Come on, speak mysteries. Build your faith. Build up yourself on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Build up yourself on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Build up yourself. Speak mysteries. Speak mysteries into the atmosphere. Speak mysteries into the unseen things. Every word in Arabakashaya is like a missile going out in Abakosha. Into the enemy's camp and Aboshi and Arabakaria Sola. Hallelujah. Oh God, we bless you, we praise you, we adore you, we magnify you. Everything we need, we have. And we thank you for it. We give you glory for it. We give you praise. Hallelujah. In advance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And we say to the many situations, peace. Be still. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. But when you stay and communicate with people from a love level, then you're actually still operating in the greatness of God. And before you know it, it's a win-win situation. Before you know it, it's not, oh, you're wrong and I'm right. You're actually still in a place of love and still communicating with that person to where that situation has been changed from, uh, from this level to now a God level. And so it's so important when God said, why are you fearing? What fearest thou? He said, have you forgotten that I love you? 
Have you forgotten about my fear? Have you forgotten about my power? And so he's continuously, uh, because when you see people communicating, arguing, and, and upset with one another, they're totally out of faith, right? They're completely believing that that person is trying to put them down or there's an there's ulterior motive. When God is saying, look at them from my eyes. Go from a love level, from, from a fear level to a love level. Go from that place, and then you'll find that you can interact and live on this earth from a love, with a love level instead, instead of faith. I mean, from a love level instead of play, going from a place of fear. Amen. I was first introduced this story when I was, I think it was a Catholic brother uh, that read me this story long, long, long time ago. But I grew up, my grandmother read me this story every time I spent the night. And... Since then, he began showing me things. I just have a couple of little notes I put down. But it reminded me of the story that you told. It doesn't matter if you're stranded on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere. It doesn't matter where you're at. That you're going to get to the other side. And you, you, you began looking into the words here. It says, he, on the same day when the evening came, he said, let us pass over to the other side. You know, it's interesting that he, he knew, he said, let us pass over because our faith is never tested on the shore. Our faith is tested in the boat, in the middle of the storm. Having left the crowd, they took him along in the boat as he was in other little boats who were also with him. Isn't that the definition of set-apartness? You leave the crowd, you get in the boat with him, and now because of this story, we know what to expect. Set-apartness, is, it's a hard lifestyle. But he knew the reason why we had to go through this was because, once again, it was for one man on the other side. The deliverance of one man, you will go through the storms to pass from one side to the other. It says right here, And there came a great windstorm, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already being filled. Do you think they would have gotten to the boat if the storm was already going on? The enemy plans it. So that right in the middle, if you're going across thinking everything's ho you know, hunky-dory, he's going to introduce this. But you see, Messiah already knew that it was already going to happen. And so the waves and all that came, and he said he was in the stern asleep on a cushion. And they woke him and said to him, today, or excuse me, teacher, is it no concern to you that we perish? And I can almost hear because he knows what's on the lying on the other side. Is it no concern to you that others will perish? If you don't go through this, then others will perish. And so, again, it's a testing of our faith. Having been awakened, rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still in the name of Yahushua. And the wind, the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you not yet belief? Again, he saw them as the Israelites all the way back. Look what all I did to deliver you from Egypt. Have you still not yet belief? Lastly, and they feared exceedingly and asked each other, who, this, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Fear prevents us from knowing him. Because they didn't quite know him at that point, that he was even capable. But fear will prevent us from knowing who he is. Well, one thing I will continue to say from, from the very, something the Father showed me from the very beginning as I begin studying this and walking this walk with a true and intentional heart to be a true believer of Messiah back when I turned 40, 11 years ago, that the other side is never shipwrecked. He will always take us to the other side. And our faith is never tested while on the seashore because then... We have an out. We have a choice to make. But into, and it's that stepping out into, Father, as we step out into your will, that there is no storm, there is no wind, there is no unseen force that can derail us when we are in the boat, we are on, in your will on the way to the other side. Because it's not about that. It's about the end. It's not about how you begin. It's about the salvation of one man it was worth it all just to read the verse that said, he, and he was sitting clothed and in his right mind. My Elohim, I've seen people not in their right mind even this week. 
unreasonable men. But I thank you, Father, that you hear us and that you are with us and that you have empowered us with the authority now to take take authority over every obstacle that keeps us from leading others into the truth because that's what it's all about. Not that we can live a stress-free life because I promise you, you said, Messiah, you said in this world you will have trouble but it's okay because I've overcome the world. I've overcome the storm. Why? Because I've given you the authority now to do what I did. And so we get to take that authority because there's someone held captive by the demonic on the other side and they need our help. And come hell or high water, we will go to the other side. We will make it. And we thank you, Father, for giving us the tenacity and the never give up spirit to do just that. And we thank you that it begins with the blessing of our Father who saw us as a broken and scattered nation. You've called us to your city. I'm gonna make you my treasured possession. And you know what? I'm gonna bless you with this blessing so that you can take me to the uttermost parts of the earth. But it begins with you. So, Father, we thank you now for that blessing as we receive it that you spoke so long ago. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yes, the Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Peace, be still. We've come.